Wow, you actually did it. You clicked on a video that's just going to tell you all of the mistakes you're making. Well done. Jokes aside, whether you just picked up GTA Online in 2024, or if you're coming back from a long break, welcome back. Today, I'm going to tell you about 10 mistakes that you should avoid in order to progress through GTA Online as efficiently and fast as possible. So let's get straight into it. And at number 10, we have spending all of your money as soon as you get it. And I know what you're probably thinking, TGG, what's the point of getting the money if I can't spend the money? That's the whole point of the game, right? Well, yes, but also no. I find that a lot of newer players still spend money on the wrong things, which is weird, right? Like when I think of GTA Online, the things I would want to buy first if I'm a new player are things like supercars, cool outfits, and apartments. Maybe that's just me, I don't know. But these are actually some of the worst things you can buy as a low level player, let me explain. In your early stages of GTA Online, you want to spend money on things that will actually make you more money. So, for example, instead of buying a supercar, maybe buy an armored car that's going to make your missions easier to do. Instead of buying just a random apartment, maybe instead put that money into one of the businesses in the game that can help you make more money in the future as well. GTA Online is a game where you need to spend money in order to make more money. So as you're starting out, make sure the things that you spend money on are the things that are going to actually make you more money in return. And unfortunately, things like clothes and especially things like supercars nowadays just aren't going to do this. GTA Online isn't a racing game anymore, not really. That's not how you're going to make money. For most of the activities in the game, getting things like an armored vehicle or a weaponized helicopter are going to be much more efficient in helping you make money than just a fast car. Unfortunately, GTA Online is kind of just built around armored vehicles now and supercars don't really have that much of a place if you do want to use some supercars though today's video is sponsored by asphalt legends unite asphalt legends unite is launching on the 17th of july 2024 on ps5 ps4 android ios pc nintendo switch xbox and is steam deck verified so you can play on any platform with the same account and play cross play with your friends it's completely free to play if you played asphalt 9 all of your progress is going to carry over, so don't worry about starting fresh. And there are over 250 hypercars to add to your collection. That's, uh, that's a pretty big number. We're getting improved graphics. And that's one of the main things I love about this game, the visuals. Like, just look at this gameplay on your screen here. Driving down this massive mountain, seeing all of the other mountains in the background. It's beautiful. And when Unite launches, we'll be getting a brand new Singapore track with crazy lights and crazy environments like a neon octopus, roller coasters, and a giant aquarium. What? This map sounds like a task for the Kernesig Yesco. The game's also introducing clubs to make it easier than ever to interact with your friends, whether you're on your PC at home, your console in your living room, or if you're just on your mobile device out and about. So download Asphalt Legends Unite now to receive a special pack of launch rewards when it launches on July 17th, and I'll see you on the racetrack. At number nine, we have picking fights with other players. This can be really, really fun to do, but if you don't have the necessary equipment to actually fight other players, you're just not gonna have fun. And if you're a low level player or a new player, you just probably aren't gonna have these things. For example, some of the best vehicles and weapons in the PVP meta right now are worth millions and millions of dollars. A lot of them upwards of $5 million. That level 200 in your lobby that you're gonna go and try and fight, he has like all of those things that you need. You have like a carbine rifle and a sports car. So yes, don't get me wrong, PvP can be a lot of fun in this game, but a lot of PvP players take their PvP very, very seriously. So if a low level player comes to try and kill them, they will kill you over and over and over again until you are forced to basically just leave the lobby. The next mistake is not using invite only lobbies. So this kind of plays into the previous one where other players can sort of grief you. And if you're a returning player, you might not actually know this, but a lot of things like heist setup missions, business missions, those sorts of things, you can actually do those completely solo in invite only or friend only sessions now. So if you just go into the online menu, click find new session, you can start up an invite only or a closed friends lobby and work through these missions in peace. Now, yes, there are some benefits to doing these in a public lobby, specifically things like sell missions for your businesses. You will get a high demand bonus if you sell your product in a public lobby. So in theory, yes, you can make more money by doing sell missions in a public lobby. But at the same time, if you're a low level player, you just won't have the necessary things to defend yourself in these missions. 
and most of the time you're just going to end up getting blown up and losing all of your cargo which means the hours that you spent actually getting the cargo and stock for your businesses is just going to be worthless this is a mistake that i see a lot of new players making in the lobbies that i'm in so save yourself the hassle and just do all of your sell missions in private lobbies for now and speaking of private lobbies to sell your businesses let's move on to the next mistake and that's buying the wrong businesses as i mentioned earlier things like apartments aren't great for making you money the main reason for that is high-end apartments let you start up the original five heists that were introduced into the game way back in 2015 and those heists have kind of just been power crept now They're they don't pay as much money they take a lot longer to complete even some older businesses like your MC businesses just aren't that great anymore to be honest so if you're new or you're coming back from years ago when those businesses were really really good you're probably gonna need to buy some new ones as of right now the best ways to make money in GTA online are things like the Cayo Perico heist which you need a Kasatka submarine for the Dr. Dre contract which you need an agency for and then there's some other good ways to make money with things like the auto shop salvage yard and nightclub of course if you want to know a bit more about all of these businesses i've made a lot of videos on those so check those out or from other youtubers as well and hopefully we can get you on the right track in terms of what you should buy moving on to the next mistake is not doing your treasure hunts now i don't recommend these for everyone but if you're kind of stuck and you don't have any great ways to make money right now treasure hunts are going to be a really good way to get you some quick cash there's a few of these in the game right now we've got the stone hatchet treasure hunt navy revolver double action revolver as well as some collectible hunts if you want to try those as well but they will take a bit longer but most of these treasure hunts you can smash them out in just over an hour and they're gonna get you two hundred and fifty thousand dollars each so if you're struggling to make money and you don't have any good businesses right now would definitely recommend giving those a go all right into the top five we have not using the weekly discounts still every single week on my weekly update videos I still see the comments about people buying something just before it goes on sale so if you don't know every single thursday gta online gets a weekly update new vehicles will go on sale new things will go on bonus money for that week and as a general rule i don't recommend ever buying anything on like a tuesday or a wednesday instead just wait one or two more days see if it goes on sale with the next weekly update and hopefully you can get it a bit cheaper honestly for a lot of the really big purchases in gta online things that cost like over five million dollars for a lot of those things i would just never recommend buying them unless they're actually discounted on sale for a lot of the cheaper items maybe this isn't as important but for your very big purchases make sure you make use of the weekly update discounts and never buy anything on a wednesday into the top four the next mistake I see low level players doing is contact missions. Now, again, this is something that's going to be very confusing. Like, contact missions? Isn't this game about doing missions? Well, no, not really. Not anymore. It used to be, but times have changed. There are basically no contact missions in the entire game that are worth doing in terms of just making money. It kind of sucks, but yeah, contract missions just pay like absolute trash. Quite literally, if you're a level one, you are much better just going to do the clock and bell farm raid than any mission in the game. If you want to do them one time just for the story experience, for example, then yeah, sure, maybe go do those contact missions. But if you're trying to make money, this is one of the worst ways in the entire game. Instead, do things like I said, like your treasure hunts, like your clock and bell farm raid, like your time trials, and eventually you can start doing things like businesses, heists, and contracts. But contact missions, it's just not it anymore at number three one of the biggest mistakes i see players making is selling your businesses at the wrong time okay what do i mean by this well let's say you have a full bunker and you'd want to go sell it in a public lobby okay this is bad for a few reasons of course number one is you're selling it in a public lobby which can be difficult for newer players but in particular it's the fact that you're selling a full bunker or a full business a lot of businesses are supposed to be operated with multiple people so a lot of the time it's going to give you multiple vehicles that you need to sell if you want to stop this from happening you actually need to sell your business product before it fills up all the way in fact you actually need to sell it before it goes over like one quarter let's use the bunker 
as an example, if you resupply it once, that will always only give you enough product that will fit in one cell vehicle. Anything more than that, like two full resupplies, for example, will give you too much product in your bunker and it will spawn you most likely two or three vehicles. Sometimes this won't be an issue if you don't get griefed, but a lot of the time you just won't have time to sell all of these vehicles within the mission timer. And even if you do, it increases the chances of a griefer coming along and blowing it up. Of course, doing this in an invite only lobby makes it a lot less likely that you're gonna fail these missions. But nonetheless, if you try not to make mistakes, make sure you optimize your businesses so that you only get one sale vehicle if you're doing it solo. Otherwise, try and get some other people to help you out. At number two, following up on the businesses. I know a lot of this video has been about businesses. Just a lot of people make mistakes with businesses. Even me from time to time, like it happens, they're very complicated, but it's not buying the business upgrades. This is a massive source of confusion because a lot of people think if you just buy the business, it should work. And that's just not really how how it works. Most of your businesses will have a staff, equipment, and security upgrade that you can buy by going into the computer that's in your business. This is gonna cost you a lot of money, but it's gonna make that business make product faster and help you earn a lot more money from the product that you sell. In fact, for things like the MC business and even the bunker, if you don't buy the staff and equipment upgrades, the business might not even be profitable for you. For example, if you buy supplies for $75,000 each time, it's only gonna give you just over $75,000 worth of product, which means unless you want to go out and steal supplies every single time, the only way you're really going to be making any profit with this business is by buying the upgrades. Again, there's a lot of guides on YouTube to walk you through every business. Honestly, that could be another mistake in itself, not watching a guide on a property before you purchase it. I know it kind of sucks that you have to do that, but the businesses are very complicated. So honestly, just before you buy any business, go watch a video on it on YouTube and see if it's actually worth buying. I'll just say that. That's an easy way to solve all of your problems. And at number one, one of the biggest mistakes I see people making in GTA Online, how do I know? Because, well, even I have made this mistake just until recently is not getting your settings right. It was only a couple years ago that I actually dove into my settings to figure out a few things and this improved my game a lot. There's a lot of settings that you're gonna want to change. I have made a standalone guide so I'll refer you to that after this video but quickly a few things you're gonna want to change. Make sure your matchmaking is always open because if not no one is ever gonna be able to join any activity that you start. Some other important settings are things like changing your measurement system. For me for example I'm in Australia so I use the metric measurement system. It annoys me when I see miles on my map instead of kilometers. This will fix that. Even things like changing your weapon reticle, motion blur, things like this will just improve your gameplay experience dramatically. In fact, maybe even the most important one if you're playing on next-gen consoles is your graphics mode. Putting this on performance will increase your frame rate to 60 frames per second, which makes the game feel a lot smoother. So we'll wrap the video up there. If you want to go a bit more in depth on your settings, I'll leave the standalone guide I made on it below, as well as an entire graphics guide if you're playing on PC. But until then, happy grinding, and I'll see you in the next video. Boys! Since I was in the seventh grade Had my first kid, I was only 17 Always a provider for my pack like Wolverines But you won't find me on the mountaintop